section 4.8 uh, Newton's method uh, so if we are interested in general mathematicians are interested to learn how to solve a polynomial function so if you have a polynomial f of x equals 0 how do we solve a polynomial function those equations or functions they can really get complicated at some point that we can't we can't solve by hand and what we are interested to learn is if there is a method using calculus that would help us to at least approximate a solution for an equation. So when we say solve, solve um, f of x equals 0, what do we mean? We mean this equation here, if we look at it graphically, and this, is, this will be given, and the one on the right side is really the x-axis, the equation of the x-axis y equals zero so we are interested to learn uh, assume that the graph has one solution one real solution it would be let's say like this this is the graph of f we're interested to find this r value what is the r value so that's that's all we need this this is the root of this one but of course for different polynomials or different equations it can have more than one maybe two three four etc uh, real solutions and they could be positive and or negative and it could be the, at the same time positive and negative so Newton came up with really uh, a good method to help us approximate those real roots for that equation f of x so how do how did he come up with this well he started uh, it's kind of similar to the um, linear approximation method if, if you remember linear approximations so in linear approximations we approximated a function by its tangent line at a given point or at a certain point so what did he do let me interpret this graphically uh, so you can see what's going on let's say we have um, the graph the function goes like this this is uh, the function f and so we are interested to find the r value or approximated here so what newton did newton said okay i'm gonna um guess a value for r say say x1 i'm gonna put it here we don't know where, where that is and then he projected this up on the function itself projected vertically up so that will give me a point there that point at that point what he did he drew a tangent line so he drew a tangent line. Maybe the graph is not very accurate, but he drew a tangent line. So now the coordinates of that point are x1 comma f of x1. So at that point, he drew a tangent line to the given function or to the graph of the given function. It intersected this at x2. It intersected this. Let, let me redraw it and make it... Um, Kind of more accurate than what what I just what I just drew. Let me make it more accurate. So let me make it um, this way. So this is our x two. Um, and so what he did, he he said, okay, we can find the equation of this tangent line. So this is tangent line to the function at that point. Remember, you can guess that one, or it will be given to us. So either it's given, or you can guess it. So now what we need to do is we need to find, uh, he found the equation of the tangent line uh, using the given function and the point. You can find the equation of the tangent line using y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's the equation of the tangent line. And um, to find the, the slope of the tangent line, y minus y1, is the derivative of the function at x1. So x minus x1. And y1 here is f of x1. So that's how we started with this one. And he said, I'm going to draw a projected uh, again, either up or down. Let's say I'm going to project it down this way. And wherever this intersects, we're going to draw a tangent line. Uh, not, that, not very accurate. Going to adjust a little bit with the graph. So uh, he drew a, another tangent line. So this is another ta tangent line. 
and this is intersecting this at x3 and then he kept going on and on projected up uh, down again another tangent line and as we move on and on with this these points that you see on the axes like x1 then x2 then x3 notice how they are getting closer and closer to the actual value r that i just wrote in red so um the distance gets closer and closer to this um so from here he said okay i i found the equation of tangent line at the point x1 f of x1 and now what i'm gonna do is i'm going to find x2 how am i gonna find x2 so this point here has coordinates x2 comma zero x2 comma zero so let's substitute that in here into this equation for y and x so y is zero f of x1 equals the derivative at x1 uh, x is x2 minus x1 remember i need to find x2 why do i need to find x2 because then i'm gonna find the equation of the tangent line at x2 comma f of x2 and that would give me x3 when I intersect it with the x-axis. And then I move on and on with that. So let's see what happened. We need to find x2. Let's keep this side the same. Drop the zero. Distribute x2 times f prime of x1 minus x1 times f prime of x1. Um, we can isolate the term that has x2 in it. And then that gives us x1, the derivative at x1, minus f of x1 then divide both sides by f prime at x1 so that will give me only x1 here minus f of x1 over the derivative at x1 so that's what he got he said okay this is x2 and then he ran through this again and he found an expression uh, for or equation for x3 which was simply replacing all the x1s with x2 so x2 minus f of x2 divided by the derivative at x2 and then he did it again for x4 and x5 and then for the nth case or the nth approximation x sub n plus 1 is x sub n minus f of x sub n over the derivative at x sub n this is called the nth approximation the nth approximation okay and what happened in this case, this is really what he proved uh, to help here. So we can say, he, we can say, as xn gets closer, gets closer to r, as I showed on the graph, then what happened, the limit of xn as x approaches, as n approaches infinity, as n gets bigger and bigger, is equal to r. So this means, as we move on and on with this x1, x2, x3, x4, x4 would be better than x3 and x5 would be better than x4 and so on and so forth. Eventually we get very, very, very close to it. So in, in summary, we say it's better than nothing. So it's, it's better to say, I don't know how to solve it or find solutions to that equation. It's better to say I can find an approximation to that. So that, that would make it much easier. So let's look at an example here about how we apply this as an example so um, starting let's say they give us this one starting with x1 equals 1 find find the third approximation so they specifying how how far you need to go with this one find the third approximation x sub 3 to the function or equation f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 1 equals to 0. So notice how they give us x1. x1 is given. So all I need to do is I always write down the formula x sub n plus 1, x sub n, especially when I start doing this the first time, uh, the derivative at xn. So I, they give me x1. So if I take n equals 1, n equals 1, that will give me x2 is x1 minus the function at x1 over the derivative at x1. And what do we get here? Well, x1 is given as 1, so x2 equals 1 minus f of 1 over the derivative at 1, over the derivative at 1. So we need on the side, I can find f of 1. f of 1 is 1 minus 3 plus 1 minus 1. That's a negative 2. 
uh, we need to find the derivative for that function 3x squared minus 6x plus 1. The derivative at 1 is 3 minus 6 plus 1. And that gives me negative 2 as well. Okay, so I'm going to substitute these values in here. 1 minus the top was negative 2, the bottom was negative 2. So that gives us uh, 1 minus 1. So x2 is 0. So I found x2. So now we need to find x3. x3, when we take n equals 2, then x3 is simply x2 minus f of x2 divided by the derivative of x2. So what is x2? x2 is 0 minus f of 0 divided by the derivative at 0. And then um, you can find on the side what f of 0 is. f of 0, if you look at the function, that will give us 0 minus 0 plus 0 minus 1. That's a negative 1. So that's a negative 1. We can look at the derivative at 0. If we look back at the derivative, derivative was... Um, 3x squared minus 6x plus 1. Substitute the 0 in, we got 1. So that gives me negative 1 over 1. That's a 1. Wait, that's all I need. You know, that, that's all what the question is asking. That's all what the question is asking. So it, 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 took, it took us back to 1. Remember how we started at 1, 0, then 1. What happens in this case? Well, so as you can see, the, it it's kind of went back and forth, 0, 1, 0, 1. Is that going to be repeated the same way or not? The answer is yes, it's going to keep repeating, 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, so what does that mean? How did, the, how did that help me to solve the equation? Well, let's see what happened. So what I did, I ran a program to show you how the values change as, as n increases. And then I, I graphed the given function on Desmos and then I found the x-intercept. So let's look at it here graphically. On the left side, you notice how the, uh, the, the value, when this is, this is x sub 2, this is x sub 2, you know, the, the, the 0. Then I got 1, x sub 3. Then 0, then 1, then 0, then 1. Then Do you see how it repeats all the time? And so that was for this function, you know, the function that we presented. And notice here on the graph, this is the exact x-intercept. So the value is 2.7. So the, this value is 2.769, 2.769. So what we have here is, you might ask yourself, wait, how come I get 0, 1, 0, 1? What did I do wrong or what happened here? Like, is that really a good answer or not? Well, if they give it to you this way, you just have to do it. Go up with whatever they told you to do. You know, you got it to one and you're done. Uh, but notice the value of one, the one that we, that was given to us. This value was, was kind of like far from, from the actual highlighted value. Do you see the one? So what happened is I said, okay, let's say, let's say I'm going to pick X equals two, but I'm not going to do the calculations by hand again because you already know how to do it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pick x equals two, run a program for that to generate the values, x2, x3, x4, and let's see what we're getting, okay? So keep in mind the value is 2.769. So what I did, I ran the program again, and notice what happened. This is x sub two, it became five. It's more than that, but then x sub three, it gets smaller, 3.8. X sub 4, even smaller. X sub 5, and so on and so forth. X sub 6, 2.77, 2. Point something, 2.76929. And so, so it's getting very, very close to 2.769. See, the answer here on the upper right corner is 2.769. Do you see the difference? So choosing a value for X, the closer we choose it to the actual value, where the graph intersects the x-axis, the better, the better, the closer, the better, the closer, the better. And that's why we got that um, uh, kind of like bounces back and forth between 0 and 1, 0 and 1. Uh, now let's look at um, another example, another example. So we're going to do the same, same for the 1 third x to the third plus 1 half 
x squared plus 3 equals 0 given x1 is negative 3. So they, they did give us x1 negative 3. So what we do in this case, we say let f of x, let f of x be 1 third x to the third plus 1 half x squared plus 3. Okay. And as you know, we, we need the derivative all the time in Newton's method. So if you differentiate this, you get x squared plus x plus 0. So we need x sub 2 first. So it's x sub 1 minus f of x sub 1 divided by f prime of x sub 1. x sub 1 is negative 3. So this gives us negative 3 minus f of negative 3 divided by the derivative at negative 3. And let's see. I calculated um, f of negative 3. And it gave me negative 1.5. And the first derivative at negative 3, it was 6. So I'm going to substitute them in here and do the calculation that gives me that gives me negative 2.75 negative 2.75 now do we stop here or not usually we tell the students to go al at least one more step so at least find x sub 3 so x sub 3 is x2 minus the function evaluated at x2 divided by its derivative evaluated at x2 so that is negative 2.75 minus I evaluated the function at negative 2.75 so it's f of negative 2.75 and the derivative at negative 2.75 all these three numbers always must match so what do we get negative 2.75 minus this one is negative 0 0.1510 divided by 4.8125 and with some calculations we got x3 to be negative 2.7186. So and I decided to stop here, like at that, um, at that value, and say, you know, that function has a real zero of negative 2.7186. So again, at least two steps you go, x2, x3. If you do find x4, that would be even better. Um, so we can stop here. And now um, what I did, I grabbed the function, you know, using Desmos, I grabbed the function here, as you can see. Um, and then at the point at the black dot on, where, on the x axis, so this is the x axis, y axis, that's where the graph crosses, uh, that's where the graph crosses the uh, x axis. So the graph crosses the x axis at, at this point, And the value is negative 2.718 negative 2.718 it's very very close to the one we got you see it like it's really really good uh, approximation what about if we pick um, another example given f of x f of x equals uh, x to the third minus 4x squared plus 1 equals to 0 uh, notice no starting point okay so they would like us to approximate the real zero or zeros of this function so this could have either one one real root or three real roots we don't know unless if we graph it right so let's say i'm i don't have a graphing calculator i'm not going to graph it and i don't know the starting point how can i guess a number for this usually um we stay around the neighborhood of zero for for this kind of functions and by just guessing so this is my guess I'm going to find f of 0. So f of 0 gives us 0 minus 0. So 0 minus 0 plus 1. That's a 1. And I found f of 1. f of 1 is 1 minus 4 plus 1. That's a negative 2. This is positive. This is negative. So what does that tell us about the graph? I don't know how the graph looks like. I'm just randomly 0, 1. So it's going to go through 0, 1, the graph. And it's going to go through 1, comma negative 2 somewhere here. So I don't know how it looks like. I just know it's going to come down and go through these two points, right? I don't know um, exactly the exact point. All I need to know is going to go through these two points. So the question is now, we are interested to find this point here, this point. What is that or what is the closest one? So notice how between 0 and 1, right, that the, the number, that number falls between 0 and 1. Since the number falls between 0 and 1, we can guess, we can guess x1 to be in between, like a half, 0 0.5. So do you see like how I got this? 
So that's the first thing. And always we need the derivative uh, of the function. And I'm going to find, I'm going to use Newton's uh, uh, method here. So we're going to use Newton's method. So to find x sub 2. So x sub 2 is x1 minus the function evaluated x1 over the derivative at x1. So um, I found f f of uh, x1, which is f of a half. That give me 0 0.125. And then the derivative at x1 is f prime at 0 0.5, which is negative 3.25. So I'm going to substitute these values in here. So x1 is 0 0.5 minus the function evaluated at 0 0.125 divided by negative 3.25. So now all I have to do is calculate what that is going to be. So we can put that in the calculator and see what that gives me 0 0.5385. That's x sub 2. Again, it would be nice to go and calculate x sub 3, go ahead and find this, x sub 2 minus the function evaluated at x2 over the derivative at x2. So this is 0 0.5385, the one we just found, minus the function evaluated at the same value divided by the derivative evaluated at the same value. And now, if you put that in the calculator, 0 0.5385, minus this gave me zero negative zero point zero zero three seven seven four over negative three point four three eight one and if we divide this and calculate that gives me zero point five three seven four let me see so this is x three x three so x look at x three and x two zero point five three eight zero point five three seven four very close so what this tells me, because they are getting very close to each other, very close to each other. So we can say since x3 is very close, very close to x2, we can assume here, assume that x3 is the solution. So x3 0 0.5374 is the solution. Um, that we're looking for because people say okay how how should i know if i go x3 or stop at x4 x5 so as these numbers get very very close to each other you notice then you can stop at that point if it's x3 or x4 or whatever it is now uh, another thing to do also we can check we can check um x3 by finding by simply finding f of x f of x3 so f of x3 is f of 0 0.5374. Um, so you substitute this into the given equation, which I already did, and that gave me about 0 0.00005413.6, which is really almost zero. That's what I'm looking for. It's almost, you know, it's almost zero value. So that's why um, I can assume, we can assume, so we can say 0 0.5374 is, um, is the root we're looking for. So that's what Newton's method helps us. Um, we can look at one last example uh, as an application to Newton's method. So use Newton's method, use Newton's method uh, to find the fourth root of three the fourth root of three so how do you find the fourth root of three okay so using newton's method like that may, might be surprising for someone to see a question like this newton's method has to deal with finding or approximating the real roots of a given uh, equation what this has to do with this one let's check that out we can let x equals the fourth root of three fourth root of three and I want to approximate x. So what we can do, raise both sides to the fourth power. Subtract four on, uh, 3 on both sides. That would make it 0. Now you can assume this is the function. So we have a function now, a 4 degree polynomial. Okay. Uh, if you graph this, if you graph this, um, I think it will look like something like, you know, when x is 0, y negative 3. So it might look like this. 
okay so that's that's a negative three here zero um, x equals one is here on the graph I noticed when I graphed it so I can say I'm gonna start so start with x1 equals one as it's close to the value or the root I'm looking for I'm, I'm gonna look at this root here what is this root okay so then I'm gonna use Newton's method so x sub 2 to find x sub 2 which is x1 minus the function over uh, its derivative both evaluated at x1 remember the function was x to the fourth minus 3 its derivative is 4x cubed 4x cubed so I'm gonna find 1 minus f of 1 over the derivative at 1 which is not difficult to find if you substitute 1 into the function, you get 1 minus 3, negative 2, over 4. And that gives me 1.5. So it's getting bigger. That's x2. Now, uh, you find x3, which is, again, x2 minus the function evaluated at x2, derivative evaluated at x2. And I found this by substituting the value I just got in to the function and the derivative and that gave me 1.5 minus 2.0625 over 13.5 evaluating this that gives about 1.3472 what's happening now it was 1 then 1.5 then 1.347 something so it's getting uh, it went high and then down then I, I said, okay, let me go ahead and see x4, what happens? Because it was 1, 1 1.5, now 1.3472. So I found, I did the work on x4, and I found x4 was 1.3171. Notice how x3 and x4 are very close to each other. So I said, okay, I'm going to assume this is the value of x. The value of x means the fourth root of 3, which is x is about 1.3171 okay so do you see how we got that so what I did I um, ran a program to calculate these values for me for for the the, the fourth root of, of 3 and this is what I got so um, for x2 this is x2 the same value I got before this next one is x3 the next one is x4 and that's what we really got there and notice as, as this goes on and on with this, these numbers uh, that you see here, um, the numbers, they're getting closer and closer. These numbers, see 1.17, 1.16 something, 1.6. You see how they're very, they, they stay very, very close to 1.31607, uh, 4. So um, that, 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 that was like really good application of Newton's method. Um, and if you happen to put this on the calculator, so the calculator, the calculator will give us an answer. Like let's say you decide to put that on the calculator to see what this is. The calculator will give about 1.31607. That's that's the calculator answer. So do you see how they are very very close to each other? So that's what Newton's method is about. Uh, very good application uh, of derivatives that allows us to approximate the real roots of a given equation.